much of life is spent finding things. Where are my keys? Dude, where's my car? I know I had three kids here this morning, but there are times in an emergency that we may need to be found. And thanks to NASA, our savior could be in a suitcase. Here's Adam Yamaguchi to explain. Natural disasters like earthquakes, hurricanes, or tornadoes can be deadly. To save people trapped underneath collapsed buildings, time is the critical factor. Standard rescue techniques include digging by hand, sending in dog teams, or inserting video cameras through small openings in the debris. But now there's a device that can pick up the heartbeats of humans in under a minute, helping first responders rescue trapped survivors faster. I made my way to Pasadena, California and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory to meet Jim Lux, JPL's task manager for developing the Finder. So this is the Finder. That is the Finder. How does this work? Well, it works by sending a low power radio signal out into the rubble and it looks for the reflections coming back. The reflections from the rubble don't move. The reflections from you, if you're buried in the rubble, do. Your heart beats and your skin moves a little bit and we detect that. So can we take a look inside? Sure. Oh, wow. So inside here, we've got the batteries in the bottom and these are the actual radar units. There's a transmitter and there's receivers, the antenna that looks forward and one to look out the side. Now, how long does it take for the finder to kind of discriminate between all the different heartbeats and the noise? Well, that you would it, encounter. it makes measurements for 30 seconds, and then it takes 15, 20 seconds to process it and come up with a display for the user saying how many victims were detected. What is its range in terms of how far out? out? We've detected people that were buried 30 feet deep in the rubble from 30 feet out in front. In an open forest or a parking lot, 100 feet is not a problem. The finder helps discern which heartbeats are human and which are not by displaying heart rate speeds it picks up. For example, dogs have higher heart rates than people. The finder also determines which nearby human heart rates belong to victims or rescuers. I'm seeing here that there are readings from all four directions. Right, and this is part of the key of how finder works is that it's very sensitive to detecting heartbeats. So it'll detect the heartbeats of the people standing next to the finder as well as the heartbeats of the people in the rubble. So what we actually do is we look at the heartbeats in the front and on the sides. So here we've got a, a victim in the rubble at 96 beats per minute which is pretty fast. And then we've got some people on the side at 88, 77, and 67. So we know that because the heart rate's different, that's not the same person. Only the one victim is there. JPL and NASA are known for traversing the depths of outer space. What made them develop technology for terrestrial search and rescue operations? We're all about remote sensing. And so for us, detecting whether a satellite's going around a planet in a particular way to measure the gravity or looking for tiny motions from heartbeats in rubble, it's all remote sensing. So we have a core competency here of people who know how to do these kinds of things. The finder was recently utilized in Nepal after a devastating 7.8 earthquake. And even though NASA is not a manufacturer, finder technology has been licensed to a company to build and distribute finders around the world, ready to help save lives when the next disaster strikes. 